manager and concern about your team's effectiveness and performance. If you're a parent and looking for some serious parenting tips, or if you are a partner, or if you are in a relationship and looking for some serious couple goals and relationship goals, Mr. Rajan is your go-to person. Mr. Rajan has already appeared on one of the episodes along with his wife, Mrs. Nehalata Rajan, in the episode dedicated for raising special kids. In this episode of Prerna Kesroth, we will get to know about his journey from a small town in Kerala to becoming a Chief Postmaster General of the state of Karnataka. Let's get to meet Mr. Rajan. So welcome to Prerna Kesroth once again, sir. It's such a pleasure to meet you again. My pleasure. Actually, uh, thanks for having me here. Wonderful. So uh, let's begin with your journey. It's, uh, I was going through a profile and so many accomplishments, so much knowledge you acquired. So take us through from a small village or a small town of Kerala to becoming, you know, the chief postmaster general of the state of Karnataka. So take us through this journey, how it was and, you know, how exciting was it for you? Actually, you know, the uh, one thing about uh, most of the Keralaites is that, you know, they value education a lot. So right from childhood uh, education was considered as the most important asset that one can have and uh, in spite of all the you know financial difficulties as uh, and all other difficulties uh, education was always stressed upon by my parents so uh, this is how you know uh, the uh, sort of drive for education and knowledge uh, came in because in Kerala everybody values knowledge a lot. Everybody seems to be knowing everything. And so uh, I also went along and I studied. I mean, I used to read anything that I could, I could lay my hands on. So, I mean, that is a kind of, uh, you know, desire and passion for acquiring knowledge. At this moment, I want to tell the get, the, the viewers uh, who's going to watch this episode that uh, you have multiple language knowledge and you've acquired a lot of diploma. So French, German, uh, Spanish, Malayalam, you already know it's a native language. So uh, and you're also a master practitioner for NLP. So take us through that journey and tell us how uh, did you manage all of this along with your job? along with your job, which was very, you know, in a bureaucracy, it is quite stressful. Uh, how did you manage all of this? Uh, on the contrary, the learning of the language was a, a sort of a stress buster for me. And uh, I mean, I, I never have felt uh, much of stress in my career as well, in the sense that my job, it was always, always like a passion. So, uh, I, you know, you enjoy whatever you're passionate about. And uh, so evenings, I, whenever I used to get time, I, you know, I started uh, learning French initially because uh, we had an international organization uh, to which uh, postal service officers are deputed. So I thought I may get an opportunity to work there. And uh, so I did my uh, advanced diploma in uh, French. And by doing so, I thought I may as well start with German. And I did my Mittelstuf Eins in German. And uh, then for some time I gave up because, you know, uh, all the personal issues and personal problems as well as uh, the professional challenges were uh, quite a handful. So I gave up uh, studies for some time. Then I had an opportunity to uh, be in France for more than a year to do my diploma in personal management from Indian International Institute of Public Administration at Paris, uh, where um, we had a, a French course in south of France for some time. And then I, uh, I also enrolled myself in the Sorbonne University for an MPhil during that time. Uh, then I had to return home uh, after, completion of the, after completion of the diploma there in personal management. Of course, I gave up my MPhil attempt. And uh, once I returned, I was uh, posted to Hyderabad, where we had this uh, that time, Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages. So I decided to pursue uh, my French studies because I was quite comfortable. Uh, I started, I had started thinking in French 
while well, I was in France. So not a translation basically. So then I joined for my MA in French, which is a three-year course. And parallelly, I joined also for Spanish. Uh, so uh, morning it used to be French and evening it used to be Spanish. And uh, so, uh, of course, at the same time, I also joined for a uh, study or uh, studying of COBOL, computer language. So the, I mean, it was all mixed up. A lot of things were done. Uh, well, professionally, I was uh, totally committed and I was enjoying my work in the department. Tell us about some of your key projects that you did. Uh, you were mighty proud of some of the, the initiatives that you took. And we would like to know so that we can fetch, you know, find some information, some learnings for ourselves. So please take us through those projects. In the, in the Department of Post, you know, which is now called India Post, uh, I had a lot of projects which were, uh, you know, various committees and basically preparatory in nature for various uh, implementation of various other projects. So it was like a study of a particular, like setting up a data center, for example, or rural uh, communication infrastructure, studies on that, or costing uh, of the postal services and things like that. So uh, I had projects like that, but they were all basically uh, at the instance of the India Post. I The two major projects uh, I had initiated uh, in the office, while in office, uh, where one uh, to attain excellence in training. Okay? Because I was director of the training center for about six years. And uh, training center is a very compact unit where we have uh, lots and lots of freedom to experiment. And so I, I was very confident that I could, uh, I read almost all books that were available on training and then started uh, implementing it. This particular project, which uh, lasted for about six years, uh, uh, achieving excellence in training, uh, sort of fine tuned two of my skills. That is one, one is the, the skill of dialogue, dialogue with colleagues, partners, and uh, the second one was about uh, how do you manage creativity at the workplace. So these were the uh, these were the two uh, major uh, learnings I had from that project. And I realized that uh, to go ahead with my project, a number of shifts were required. Total sort of I would say paradigm shifts. And these were uh, first thing is shifting from control to facilitation. So uh, control was our, uh, you know, sort of uh, default setup. So from that, I have to shift to facilitation. Then uh, mediocrity was being accepted in the bureaucracy. So I had to shift to genuine performance accountability and uh, excellent. There were no devices to, uh, for us to monitor the performance. Uh, then I had to shift from a laissez-faire to a value-driven set of actions. Then there was a major shift from a reactive uh, administrative approach to a totally proactive leadership, uh, especially in terms of customer centricity. Uh, we shifted from normal grievance redressal uh, to customer facilitation. And also uh, I started uh, working very closely with the consumer activists of the region. I had a number of seminars with them. I, I used to meet them personally, discuss, uh, to find out how best the government services can be made more customer centric. And uh, there was major shift from a power based hierarchy because, you know, in our system, uh, everything is hierarchical and uh, uh, power is distributed uh, in a, from for years together and the control and the fear in bureaucracy was enormous. So I shifted from that to a mission-based unit kind of working. Every unit had a mission to accomplish and my job was to facilitate all that what that is required. 
Then we also had uh, certain voluntary activities initiated in terms of customer care, where officers were asked to join a voluntary movement uh, and declare their office. You know, they exhibit a board uh, in front of their office, telling that this office, in this office, we guarantee hundred percent satisfaction to the customer, which is a very bold thing. Wow! Know. And yeah. this, we, this we are talking about in nineteen nineties, late nineteen nineties. Nineteen eighty to two thousand four. Brilliant. So customer service at that time was, I think, was the prime focus then also. Yeah, because you know when we were commercializing the service, we certainly have to come back to the customer, because mm -hmm. otherwise you know you can say that government is providing a service and you take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. When you are commercializing, you cannot do that. So we, I think I think the initiatives that you took uh, essentially was a paradigm shift, like you said. You know, from being a critical manager to an you know and to an a motivating or a encouraging manager or from being a micromanaging manager to somebody who's empowering the people and the transparent communication that you brought into uh, the day to day working actually there was a more than motivation we we, we had uh, we had thrown open the whole environment the communication it was totally transparent and we were all in it it is not that i was trying to motivate people we were all in it and uh, we did not know where we will reach, but we knew that we are going in the right direction. Because you know, the vibes were, in the environment, the vibes were so good. Wonderful. You have actually taken us through the entire journey, but then there's a starting point is missing here. You mentioned last time that while you were in France and undergoing this personal management program, something happened that triggered this thought of, you know, establishing yourself as somebody you and the country feels proud about. So tell us about that. Then one particular memory, which is very close to you. Yeah, it's very close to me, but, uh, you know, actually, so when I uh, was attending this uh, uh, Diploma in Personal Management course at uh, International Institute of Public Administration in Paris, in uh, the Viva Voce of the final exam, the examiner who was uh, from the uh, administrative service, so French administrative service, which is, which is equivalent to the IAS here, he, after the interview, he said, uh, your country should be proud of you. And that is one, one simple, single sentence, uh, which sort of uh, stayed within, within me and uh, inspired me to see how much can I do in this bureaucracy. Okay. And so that uh, thought was somewhere running in the back of my mind all the time. And uh, when I was in the training center, I said this center should be known for its excellence. And it was known. And you made the country and the people and the department and your family so proud. That reminds me to the next personal project that you, you have to share with us. What is that one personal project that you were handling all these years? <laughs> the personal project, you know, it's again, all these projects are continuation of from one to another, it's telescopic basically, because what started in training center, uh, you know, it came to the operational area later, and then uh, what uh, the self-transformation process that started uh, in my transformation leadership uh, project, that uh, sort of uh, wanted, uh, it forced me, sort of encouraged me to uh, see whether I can transform myself at home. So I, I wanted uh, alignment at home. Okay, initially I used to tell my wife that we should have peace at home, but then not that we didn't have peace, but uh, the kind of, I mean, maybe alignment would have been a better word. Uh, so that project has been continuing for about 10 years. It is still continuing because I have, I have still some more things to achieve. The first one is the, presence, her presence in the, in the moment, in the now, okay, uh, because she is present 100%. I had never seen her in any occasion, any, how much more difficult or how much more pleasant it is. Her presence is remarkable. So that is something uh, to be, yet to be fully achieved by me. The uh, second thing is that uh, her love, her compassion, that is also very remarkable and uh, 
uh, I dream about it many times. I, I wish I could be like that. Uh, of course, I'm making my own efforts to reach there. Uh, maybe about 50-60% I would have achieved that possible. And the third one is the her total process orientation. And um, I'm slowly getting it on the outcomes from my mind and to be as process oriented as she is. So that is a continuing project, uh, very personal to me. And I'm confident uh, I'll be able to reach there one day. <laughs> I'm very confident too, and I wish you a lot of luck on that particular project as well. So what areas uh, you would like to share your expertise in? Uh, you know, I, I have um, mainly uh, transformational leadership, organizational transformation, because the training center, which is a very compact unit, uh, I mean, I have the experience of transforming that uh, environment in that organization and bringing about uh, radical shifts in training. The, the other one is uh, any other organization which is very you know loosely bound and uh, spread over wide areas, uh, diverse also. So organizational transformation and uh, transformation leadership are the two key areas where I have a lot of personal experience. And uh, I mean, I, I know I have uh, experienced the nuances of that. You're also a ma master practitioner for NLP. So um, you think people can reach out to you in case if they need some sort of coaching or mentorship from you? Yes. Mentoring uh, is uh, mentoring and training. Training is uh, my passion, actually. Mentoring, uh, I have been a mentor for the department officers for about two years. And uh, I, I love mentoring. I, in fact, I had trained a number of officers to be mentors in the in, in India Post because these mentors are mentoring is also required in the organization. So I would uh, like to help anyone um, who is interested or in you know in getting either mentoring men, mentoring done or training done uh, or uh, uh, tips and suggestions and uh, transformation leadership and organization transformation, etc. I am available. The another area which uh, I have not start seriously worked on, but we are we have a lot of experience is about parenting. Me and my wife, we have considerable experience in parenting, and uh, that's an area where we could of, be of help, especially uh, parenting of. Uh, parenting where the you know they have the specially able children are there in the family and life is very challenging so that's true and both of you uh, are the you know the role models for all of us to look at special or otherwise any which ways as parents you are role models for us to look at and how to raise kids uh, so beautifully like you did like you're doing currently also uh, any message that you like to give to the to the community uh, I would like to uh, suggest that uh, you know normally what happens is we we are all uh, basically stories. We make up our stories and we become stories. And uh, since we are making our own stories and our own life, it is in our hands to change that, right? Every word that we speak to ourselves is very important. It can make or break one's life. You know, all these uh, transformations are gradual. We need to have patience. Uh, like we have patience with others, we need to have patience with ourselves as well. And anybody who wants to change can change. Nothing stops the person from changing. Wow, beautiful thought there. Uh, compassion for yourself is also important. And when you when you treat yourself with a lot of love and respect, that is when you treat others and they treat you likewise. So that's rightly said. Any new uh, projects or upcoming projects or new plans that you have you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly I would like to help the society, the people, whomsoever is in need. And... Uh, and also contribute to uh, 
transforming the organizations. I have a special liking for transforming bureaucracy, maybe you know, because of my personal experience. Uh, I have been helping people who so have approached me. Uh, I would also like to write um, at least two books, one book on self-transformation and the other one is on parenting. And uh, I think that will most probably be a collaborative effort between me and my wife. Wonderful. So I wish you a lot of luck with both your books. And I want to tell the viewers that uh, any sort of parenting advice that you need, any sort of mentorship, coaching for your startups, for yourself as manager, uh, you can always go to Mr. Rajan. He is available. I'll be sharing his contact details, his LinkedIn profile uh, in the description of this video. So I wish you a lot of luck once again. And thank you so much for gracing this episode of Prerna Kiss Road. I want to give you this opportunity and uh, I, I should appreciate your endeavor to bring out the best in people out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.